All right, you guys, uh, starting off with our very first chapter, we're going to do a little bit of intro stuff, a little bit of vocabulary from geometry, some quadrant review, a little bit of vocab, and then we're going to put some of this trigonometry stuff that you learned when you were in geometry class into action. So um, if I ever go too fast, go ahead and pause the video and just copy stuff down and then hit play, and um, you can always rewind, obviously, go back if you missed something. So. Um, I'm going to just briefly go through um, this vocabulary since I already have it written out and you can pause the video again like I said, but um, some angle definitions and things um, that you should have learned when you were in geometry class. Remember we've got a right angle that's 90 degrees. Um, difference between acute and obtuse, I think about it as an acute angle is cute, it's small, it's something less than 90. An obtuse angle, I think of the word obese, it is a bigger angle than 90 degrees, so between 90 and 180. And then we call a straight angle, the 180 degree angle. <clears throat> Something that maybe you might not have heard of these terms before, hopefully you have, but if not, we have these things called quadrants. So we have quadrant one here. This is the positive X axis and the positive Y axis. We refer to that as quadrant one. And these Roman numerals are gonna be very, very important for the semester going on. So quadrant two is here, that's the negative X axis when the x values are negative, but the y values are still positive. And then quadrant three is down here where they're both negative, and quadrant four is here. Um, and so typically when we draw angles, we always start on the positive x-axis and we rotate this direction. Um, and that's how the quadrants go as well, one, two, three, and four. Um, we have this symbol that we always use for an angle, and it is a Greek symbol. It's actually pronounced theta. And we use just a theta instead of like an X or a Y or an A or a B just because. So just get used to seeing that. Um, you'll notice that they're all up here in these angles. Those are what those symbols are. They're called theta. Anyways, the initial side, the starting side of the angle, the terminal side, the ending side of the angle. So um, typically when we're graphing angles, which I'll show you how to do a couple examples down here, we always start at zero degrees. So zero degrees is right here. It's where we always start graphing our angles, and then we rotate this direction, which is actually counterclockwise, around um, the quadrants. I also want to label here just so it's a little bit easier. This is zero degrees. Um, obviously, if you rotate up here, this is 90 degrees. We have a right angle there. And if you keep going in the direction of this arrow, we have our straight angle. So if we end up going from zero to here, this is 180 degrees. And then add 90 degrees again. This is 270. And then we end up all the way back here at 360 degrees. We usually refer to this as zero degrees, not 360, um, but it is the starting and ending place of the full circle, which is 360 degrees. Anyway, so what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to, um, oh, I skipped scan standard position. It's an angle with the vertex at the origin. So remember the origin is this right here where the axes come together. And the initial side is on the positive x-axis. So we always start drawing our angles here and then we rotate however many degrees we're given. So like in this very first example, it says draw 35 degrees. So we have very specific ways that we draw and label angles here. And I'm gonna label the initial and the terminal side. So these are two vocab words, initial and terminal. Um, first of all, 35 degrees. So I'm gonna draw my coordinate plane. Remember we always start drawing on the positive x-axis, so this is zero degrees. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to rotate up just 35 degrees. And I'm gonna label 35 right here. And so just do your best. We're not gonna use protractors or anything like that, but obviously if you remember that this is 90 degrees, you're not going all, like really close to it. That would be something closer to 90 degrees. 35 degrees would be closer to the zero degrees than it would be the 90. So um, it also says label the initial and terminal side. So again, this is the starting point. This is the zero degrees that I started drawing the angle and then the ending ray is called the terminal side. Okay, let's try another one, draw 215. So again, in this case, I'm gonna start with my coordinate plane and I'm gonna start at zero degrees, which is where you always start on the positive x-axis. And I'm gonna rotate around. Remember, this is zero, this is 90, this is 180, and this is 270, all the way back up to 360. So 215 degrees is gonna be somewhere down here. 
it's between 180 and 270. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start at zero. I'm going to go all the way around this direction. This is 215 degrees. And I'm going to draw my ending ray right here. 215 degrees again. This is the initial side. This is where I started. You always start at zero. And I ended here. Initial means starting, like in the English language. Terminal means ending. So that's how we draw angles. So that is step one of the notes for today. Great job. Um, let's move on and let's go back to trig functions. Let's blast from the past, you guys. Let's talk about geometry for a second. So do you remember SOHCAHTOA? I have it written over here. Um, this is how you learned like sine, cosine, and tangent and all the ratios for them. So yes, in trigonometry class, because we have a whole semester dedicated to trigonometry, there are actually three more trig functions. I'll get to this in a second, um, but you'll just notice that they're the reciprocals. So sine, you're probably thinking, wait a second, I thought like opposite hypotenuse, what is this x, y, r garbage? Well, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but what I want to refresh your memory of first is this very first example, we're going to just use SOHCAHTOA. The way you learned in geometry class, you learned that the sine ratio is the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. Um, I have abbreviations here so you can help remember what does SOHCAHTOA stand for. Um, cosine, that stands for adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tangent ratio of an angle, that stands for opposite over adjacent. So that's what the SOHCAHTOA um, acronym is supposed to help you remember. And then in this very first example, it says given right angle or right triangle ABC. So you can see I've already drawn my triangle ABC. I'm ignoring this box for a second. I'll get to it in just a minute. Um, it says A is 5. And so do you know where to put the 5 on this triangle? Um, maybe depending on which geometry class you were in. You might have learned this, you might not, but angle A, you, it actually does matter where you put side A. This is a lowercase a, which means side, and it's always across from the angle that you labeled A. So across from angle A goes here. This side is what I'm going to label 5. Okay, and then same thing with B. Here's angle B. That means that the side B is this one. It's across from the angle, or opposite from it, if you will. And then maybe, let's see if you can figure out how long this side is. Um, if you remember Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, um, c is always what we refer to as the hypotenuse because it is always across from the right angle, and you'll notice that it's said in the problem c is a right angle. Um, that means that I'm going to put 13 here. Yes, it is a Pythagorean triple, but you can also do Pythagorean theorem if you need to. Let me pause and just show Pythagorean theorem over here if you need to. Here's what I'm actually doing. Again, you might have this Pythagorean triple memorized or you might have forgotten that. You can always go back to Pythagorean theorem. Just remember that the two sides squared that you're adding together are your two legs. They're the two sides that make up the right angle, and the c squared is always the hypotenuse. So sometimes you'll be given the hypotenuse, and you have to kind of work backwards and find one of the legs. That's fine. No big deal, but this is how I ended up with c equals 13. Anyways, let's see if we can fill in some of these trig ratios. And so notice how all of these problems I'm referring to angle A. And so, oh, I should have put A's here. Okay, cool. So we are referring to this angle here, this one. And so this side opposite the A is going to be my opposite side. This is opposite. The side that is adjacent or right next to the A is the 12, and the hypotenuse is always the 13. So let's just use these ratios that you should remember or be remembering maybe from geometry class. Let's see if we can use these and fill in the ratios for all six, believe it or not. There are six, welcome to trig class, advanced trig and pre-calculus. Um, there are six functions here, which I'll get to in just a second. So um, let's do sine first. So remember the sine of angle A is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to write 5 over 13. And cosine, still looking at angle A, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 12 over 13. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so 5 over 12. 
So those are the three ratios that I have for sine, cosine, and tangent. If these fractions reduce, you should reduce them. Just keep that in mind. Um, anyways, look at up here. We have sine of theta. And remember, theta we usually use in trig instead of like a's and x's and stuff, but it just means the angle. So sine is y over r. I'll talk about that in a second. But if you flip the fraction, a.k.a. use the reciprocal, that gives you the, the fraction for cosecant. That's what CSC stands for. It is cosecant. So I'm just going to flip the fraction. All you do is flip this thing, and you get here. Okay, so same thing with cosine and secant. You'll notice that cosine, it's written up here as x over r. Talk about that in a second. If you flip it, you get secant. So I'm just going to flip the 12 over 13 and get 13 over 12. Same thing with tangent and cotangent. These are called reciprocal functions. Remember when you flip, that means reciprocal. Anyway, so tangent is 5 over 12. That means cotangent is 12 over 5. Okay, and I'm also going to write out these words. This is pronounced cosecant. This is pronounced secant. And this is cotangent. Okay, so sine cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. That's what the words are for those. So introducing a lot of things to you guys, let me try and explain why this X, Y, and R stuff comes into play. So example number four, it says the terminal side of an angle in standard position. Whoa, we have a lot of vocab happening here. Terminal side, standard position. That just means graph it the way that we did up here. So I'm going to first sketch a graph on the coordinate plane um, following the requirements in the problem. So it passes through the point 8 comma 15. Do you know where the point 8 comma 15 is? Isn't it like 8, 15 up here somewhere? Doesn't have to be a beautiful um, graph, but it's somewhere in the first quadrant. And I'm going to make a triangle out of it. So connect to the origin. And you always, my friends, very important, connect your triangle to the x-axis not to the y-axis. I'm going to make a note about that. So here's my triangle. So here is, I just wrote a little note about that. We always, you first put your dot wherever it's supposed to go on the coordinate plane, connect it to the origin, and then you always connect your triangle to the x-axis, not the y-axis. Okay, so I bet there are some numbers that I can come up with here. Remember this point was 8 comma 15. So doesn't that mean that this side of the triangle was 8 units? Because I went right 8 and up 15, and that's how I got to this point here. So this is 8, and this is 15. So that ordered pair gives you almost all the information you need about the triangle. I'm also going to put my theta right here. Um, that's always where you graph your theta. You always put it from the x-axis to the hypotenuse, so it's always like really close to the origin is where you put your theta in the triangle. Um, and now I just need to do a little bit of Pythagorean theorem action. If you do Pythagorean theorem, you get 17 here. You can pause the video and check my math if you want to, but 8 squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared, so that's how I got that. And now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and write out the six trig functions so I can come up with the ratios now that I have my whole triangle labeled. So I paused and I wrote out all six of the um, abbreviations for the trig functions. And so let's think about this for a second. Sine of theta. Here's the angle that I'm looking at. This is where my theta is. I remember from geometry class and from this problem that we just did as review that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm just going to write 15 over 17. But what is this x and y stuff up here? Let's talk about this box for a second. So in trigonometry, we don't use opposite adjacent hypotenuse. I like to think of it as a little bit elementary, and we're now in advanced trig and pre-calc, and we don't have to use this opposite hypotenuse lingo. We can actually be a little bit more, I don't know, politically correct. So um, it's y over r. So why would they use y and r? Okay, so let's look at our theta here. Isn't the 15, which is the opposite side, isn't this representing the y value? And that will always be the case if you draw your triangle appropriately. And what does this R stand for? So we'll get into this in a couple days, but R actually stands for radius. If you've ever heard of the unit circle, you can envision like this 
being the radius, the hypotenuse we're referring to now on is the radius. And that's because we're going to be like analyzing a circular function here. And so don't really worry too bad about that. But for right now, R is the hypotenuse always. So all of these R's anywhere that you see in this in these weird ratios, those are all just referring to the hypotenuse. It stands for radius. You'll see why in a couple days. Okay, let's talk about cosine of theta. So remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. But why up here is it actually x over r? Isn't this adjacent side representing the x value of this ordered pair that they gave me? So it's x, and r is the hypotenuse, so 8 over 17. And that's exactly adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, and so don't freak out about these new abbreviations and fractions and stuff. It's not something new to memorize. You can draw the triangle, and whether you think better in terms of opposite and adjacent and hypotenuse or x, y, and r is what I'm going to start referring to them as, you're still going to get the same answer every time. Now let's do tangent. So tangent up here is y over x, and the y value is 15, and the x value is 8. Again, that is opposite over adjacent, O over A. You still get the same answer, but I'm going to start thinking about it in terms of Y over X. And then remember, you just have to flip these. So for sine, when you flip it, it's called the reciprocal. Those are reciprocal functions. The cosecant of theta is 17 over 15. You just flip. And then for cosine, 8 over 17, flip it, and you get secant, 17 over 8. And same thing for tangent, flip it, 8 over 15. Again, just remember if any of these fractions reduce, please go ahead and reduce them. Okay, I'm going to draw another one. The terminal side and standard position, blah, 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 bunch of vocabulary, 3, negative 4. Where does 3, negative 4 happen on this coordinate plane? So like, I don't know, 3, negative 4 down here. What quadrant are we in? Pop quiz. Remember it goes 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and then remember, which way do I draw my triangle? To the y-axis or to the x-axis? You always connect to the x-axis. So draw your triangle up this way. And um, the theta always goes near the origin inside the triangle. So that's where the theta is for right now. And this ordered pair, remember, was 3 comma negative 4. I think that means I can label the sides of my triangle. Doesn't that mean I went right 3 and down 4? That means this is 3 units. This is 4 units, and since it's down, I'm going to keep it as a negative. Um, I do like to put the negative signs on my drawing just because it helps me not lose the negatives inside when I'm doing the trig function. So, yes, I'm not saying that this side is negative 4 units long. I know that doesn't make sense, but because it's down is why I'm keeping this negative sign here. Any ideas what the hypotenuse is for 3 and 4? The hypotenuse is going to be 5. You can find that with Pythagorean theorem. Pause the video and write it out if you need to, but you're doing 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. Okay, so I'm going to pause and I'm going to write out all the fractions. So you guys, once you have your triangle labeled, um, these fractions should be very simple. So I'm not going to refer up to the table anymore. I want to see if you can kind of think about them in terms of either y over r for sine, or you can still think about it. Here's my theta opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to use y over r. The y value is negative 4. The r, which remember is the hypotenuse, is 5. And you can go ahead and flip that thing for cosecant. Let's do cosine. Cosine is x over r, so that's going to be positive 3 over 5. Flip it for secant. And the last one, tangent, that's y over x, which is negative 4 over 3. Go ahead and flip it for cotangent. And so the next two questions are a little bit different. What I want to do is save those and do those as a warm-up together. Um, the next time I see you in class. I don't want to say tomorrow, but whenever it is. Um, and so we'll do those two, and then we'll do some group work and some practice in, in breakout rooms. So um, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully some of this brought back some fond memories from geometry class, and you have a little bit of prior knowledge um, going into this video, and it's not completely all random and new stuff. But um, let me know how this video went for you, and looking forward to seeing you again. Congratulations on making it through your first video. Bye, guys.